Microsoft just announced some new AI solutions to help fend off the competition in the AI enterprise market. But what if I told you that Microsoft has one colossal weakness? Today, we are gonna look at the new AI product, the competition, and what I believe is Microsoft's weakness and what investors should consider. Talking about weakness, can you gather the strength to hit the thumbs up, subscribe button, and check out my pinned comment for free content and special offers like fool.com slash Jose. All jokes aside, let's get started with today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so a quick look at Microsoft right now is sitting at around $420 with a market cap of roughly $3.13 trillion. Now, on October 21st of 2024, Microsoft announced numerous new solutions to kind of go with its co-pilot studios. So right now, Microsoft is at an AI tour in London, and they announced a new set of capabilities that can help you build autonomous agents. And these agents are pretty much AI agents, which we're hearing from a lot of other competitors in this space. But these agents understand the nature of your work and act on your behalf, providing support across business roles, teams, and functions. So these agents are expected to kind of be digital workers to be able to do certain roles. So they give us one example of how Pets at Home has created autonomous agents where they're using it for their profit protection team to more efficiently compile cases for skilled human review, which could have the potential to drive a seven figure annual savings. We also see another client, McKenzie and Company, is creating AI agents that will speed up the client onboarding process. The pilot show lead times could be reduced by 90% and administrative work reduced by 30%. Another perfect example actually comes from yesterday's episode where NVIDIA works with Deloitte to kind of deploy digital AI agents for the healthcare market. So typically ahead of a visit to the hospital for a surgical procedure, patients often have plenty of questions about what to expect and can be plenty nervous. To help minimize these pre-surgery jitters, NVIDIA and Deloitte are developing AI agents using NVIDIA AI to bring the next generation of digital frontline teammates to patients before they even step foot inside the hospital. These virtual teammates can have natural human-like conversations with patients answering a wide range of questions and provide supporting guidance prior to pre-admission appointments as hospitals. So for example, let's say you have a surgery, you can ask, hey, look, I'm taking this type of medicine. Should I stop this before my uh, my surgery? Should I, how, how long before my surgery should I not eat? What should I wear? What should I not wear for my surgery? What can I expect with form of recovery time? So a lot of these questions that maybe some of us might have or what most of us should have during a surgery event can be covered by an AI agent. The great thing is AI agents are pretty much available 24 seven. So if you have the jitters the night before, you can go back and ask that question over and over again. So we can see how AI agents or autonomous agents are being used in various industries along the world. So Microsoft tells us to join them during their Microsoft Ignite 2024 to experience the public preview of these autonomous agents and discover how they can empower your overall organization. Another great thing about Microsoft is they do have this great partnership and investment in OpenAI, so they are able to use their models. So Copilot Studio agents use the latest models, including the OpenAI 01 series. And for those that have been watching my shows or my episodes, you guys know how big of a deal I think O1 series is. I think this is going to increase the need of computational power. And I think this is why we saw in yesterday's episode that Microsoft is going to be such a big, big buyer of NVIDIA solutions because they are bringing AI everywhere. They're bringing it to the consumers with AI PCs. They're bringing it to enterprises with things like Copilot and these kinds of AI agents. Now imagine if all these AI agents are going to be using O1 series, which needs a lot and a lot of inferencing computational power. The need for NVIDIA chips and kind of AI chips right now is pretty, pretty high. We can also see why Microsoft and maybe OpenAR are definitely going the route of also developing their own semiconductor solutions or semi-chip solution. So right now, in my opinion, we are still seeing that AI market is still very, very computational limited. 
Now, talking about this, one of the main reasons I think Microsoft is showing off this new product a little bit earlier than expected when they're going to give it to us during their Ignite 2024 event is right now the competition in AI agents is very, very strong, especially with a company known as Salesforce, ticker CRM. Last month at its annual Dreamforce show in San Francisco, Salesforce showed off a new platform called Agent Force, which allows enterprises, organizations to spin up their own AI agents. So pretty much what Microsoft is doing. And right now, based on the CEO of, of Salesforce, he believes that Salesforce Agents Force is way better at providing higher accuracy and lower hallucination in AI compared to any other player out there. So there is also, I, I, I want to say, the CEO of Salesforce seems to have a lot and a lot of hate, maybe towards um Microsoft or just believes their product is so much better because just a few hours after Microsoft kind of talked about agents, they, he mentions that this is Microsoft kind of panic mode, that right now Microsoft is kind of flopping in the AI agent space. And obviously, I want to say one of the main reasons is they want to sell, sell their own AI agent solution. So pretty interesting here to see two big players really battling out in this AI agent market. Now, I also wanted to look at valuations for, for, for both Microsoft and Salesforce. And for one year, it seems that both Microsoft and Salesforce are trading at similar valuations. I would say personally, if they are trading at similar valuations at forward one year, I would personally look at Microsoft over Salesforce because I do believe Microsoft has a lot more growth opportunities. But I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that I believe Microsoft has one weakness in this AI space and one colossus weakness. And I think that colossus weakness is actually how big Microsoft is. And I want to give an example. You, you might be saying, Jose, why is it bad that you're such a big company? If you're such a big company, you have to have the you, you have, in my opinion, a lot more in your shoulders. You can't just release kind of demos and previews and kind of say, hey, look, we're going to be doing things like this in the future. But if you are a smaller company, I do believe you are able to kind of release demo versions and maybe not perfected versions and be OK because you don't have that huge reputation to uphold. Microsoft, where they have the whole investment community, the whole tech community, looking at them. So when they release something, it has to be very, very much perfected. The other thing is Microsoft is working on so many things at once that they really can't hone down or practice on one specific segment. And one of that is GitHub Copilot. So GitHub Copilot is expected to be kind of this AI agent to help developers in the software community. So it helps you build your own code. Now, unfortunately, there is a company out there, a startup, Courser, that is kind of beating Microsoft in this game. And I was listening to a podcast, as you guys know me, I'm a huge, huge NVIDIA investor, and I'm also a huge follower in the AI space. So I try to understand what's happening around this ecosystem. And Alex Friedman podcast, they did have a few, a few weeks ago, the Courser team. And they mentioned that, yes, Microsoft is able to have a bigger money budget, right? They have all these teams, but all those teams are scattered. And because everything is scattered, it takes longer for them to come up with any new updates. And this is where Courser came out and was able to say, hey, look, we're actually better than that GitHub Copilot from Microsoft because we're able to release updates at such a quick pace, at such a quick pace opposed to Microsoft, because I'm pretty sure for Microsoft and any big companies, big companies, they need to go through a lot of hurdles before releasing a product. And for that reason, I think Microsoft has a weakness for start, uh, in startup players in certain niches. At the end of the day, though, right, when we're looking at the big picture, I think Microsoft's biggest strength is that it's such a big company and all the big enterprises and all the big players are going to rather want to play with Microsoft solutions opposed to some startup solution. So I think those are just my overall thoughts right now that I have on Microsoft. Let me know what are your thoughts. Is Salesforce a company you would buy over Microsoft right now or are you still more of a Microsoft bull? Take care. Have a good day and see you next time.